Hello you multi, mainly Midlothian minorities. It's a mock mention. Welcome to Ralphie Review 1009. And a big mock mention thank you to Johan Gamble Putty Monk. Yeah, Gamble Putty. That's, that's definitely what it says. Anyway, on with the show. Here in the Bothy, somewhere, not anywhere, definitely somewhere in the middle of the Irish Sea. And it's a brand new year. It's 2024, Mark Mates. Time is marching on, and with a new year comes new priorities, new goals, new objectives, and new whiskies. I have one here. This is my whisky for the year, not of the year, right? But for the year 2024. It's McLean's nose. This is an interesting one and somewhat of a controversial decision to select this as my whiskey for the year because it's not a single malt and there are plenty of really good single malts to choose from. But I have selected McLean's Nose traditional blended scotch as my whiskey for the year to give some very specific feedback to the Scotch whisky industry to become more creative in delivering quality and value to the customers. Right, let's pour some. Let me introduce the bottle to you. Blended Scotch, so a combination of single malts and column still grain whisky. All the single malts coming from copper pot stills. So a very traditional style of Scotch whisky um, and one in which many modern contemporary blended Scotch whiskies are bottled at 40%, they're chill filtered, they have some E150 colouring added to them and basically you do note, right, and this is just a personal opinion, that they have been produced with a firm budget in mind in order to make a bit more profit. Now, no harm in that. That's business being business. However, most blended scotch is intended for the consumer market, the passive consumer who's brand led. This one has come out the blue, straight out the blue, no big marketing overtures or anything like that, and it's designed for the whiskey sipper. It's very good value, particularly in the UK where it's predominantly found at the moment, although I do believe that is going to change in the foreseeable future due to increasing global awareness of this particular brand. It's produced by Ardna Merkin Distillery, single malt whisky producer on the far west coast of Scotland. And um, I think they've pulled off a masterstroke with this. That's why I've selected it to be my whisky for the year. Um, and I will kind of go into quite a bit of de depth about this in my next review, 1009 Extras. This, in the meantime, is Ralphie Review 1009. Cheers. What have we got in the nose? It's well-made stuff. It's full-flavoured. Well, on the nose, it's full noseable. The nose tells you it's just good quality stuff. It's decent single malt, well-matured. And then it's been successfully not just blended, but integrated into a grain whiskey, which I would say is quite possibly the oldest component in the blend. Um, the grain whiskey itself, they have not skimped in the quality of casks. This is well made grain whiskey. So, some of the facts for you. Um, Excuse me, I've got a cat sniffing about here in the boat. Hey, big stuff. You come to give us a what a wee treat. Cat treat. Oh, you giddy. He loves his cat treats. There you go. 
Yeah, you know, you're just getting a few because I don't want to be carrying on with this whiskey review with a cat bottom right in the middle of the screen. Do I? I tell you, this big fella is getting bigger and bigger. He's supposed to have been got his full size about a year ago, but he still keeps growing. Can we move you around a wee bit here because this is a bit disconcerting for the viewers here. Oh, there we go. Hey, yeah, yeah, big monster. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, that's done it. All right. So you got all this. You got all the treats, and now you're you're heading off. Fair play. McLean's nose. It's named after a local landmark, a natural outcrop that is where the local highest mountain meets the sea. It's very prominent and very, it looks like a Roman nose, hence the name McLean's nose. Um, it's not an age statement. However, um, to compensate for that, um, it is 70% single malt. And a lot of that single malt's been maturing in sherry casks, particularly in according to my nose and all the raisins that I'm getting out of this, um, fresh sherry casks, specifically Oloroso. As soon as you know that you're getting something substantial, there is a very definitive smoky note, which is amplified by the fact that this is bottled at 46%, unchill filtered and natural colour, Where's my steampunker? As you can see, I've minimalised the bothy for the beginning of this year, but I'm never without this little device. Um, high proportion of ex-sherry casks, proud to be part of it. And me message from Charlie McLean, a Scotch whisky institution in his own lifetime. Absolutely. One of the industry gentlemen. Um, and... So he's saying burnt citrus peel, sea salt, white chocolate and bonfire. Certainly there's a kind of coal note to it. When you say bonfire, it's rather coal fire than, than wood fire in my opinion. And um, let me see in the front of the label. Right, -o. okay, okay, okay. I'm going to have to rewind a little bit here. I'm not getting the... Inf it's definitely 46%. So I'm looking for the unchill filter, and I know it is, but hey ho, perhaps they'll get, get round to that in the second edition. Hint, hint. If you want to know more, there's a QR code in the back label, a very useful thing to have. In fact, you don't even have to buy a bottle. I'll hold it right up and you can get a click, you can get a wee image of the QR code for yourself. May as well do your research before you consider buying a bottle. The nose is great. Of course it's young, but it's really good quality young. 70% malt, primarily from Ardna Merkin Distillery, who are making seriously good stuff. It's self-evident, it shows. It's why it's gaining an enormous popularity amongst well-informed whiskey drinkers around the world. Um, the grain really is making up 30% component of this bottle, which is almost the flip of what you generally get in a standard blend. Standard blends are usually about 25% malt uh, component, uh, and then you're really relying on how well matured the column still grain whiskey has been to define the quality of it. And to be honest, with a number of blends out there, it's not that high. In fact, it's not high at all. Um, but there again, those are mixing whiskies. They're not really designed for sipping. This is a traditional Scotch blend, which is a sipper, absolutely. And I, I, I notice that it's appeared on last year's online Scotch Whiskey Awards as a category finalist, um, which is very much an endorsement beyond the confines and the walls of this particular bothy. So how about the taste? Wonderfully clean, fresh, young, zesty, rich in the fullest sense of the word. 
intense barley sugar which is thoroughly assimilated into some definitive peat single malt content which is coming from Ardna Merkin. There are other single malt components apart from that distillery. I believe it to be from Glen Scotia Distillery. The quality of what they're making at this moment in time again is superb at Glen, um, Glen Scotia. So you've got two, at least two single malts coming together that are already of good quality start to start with and really it's the silent partner in this blend is the grain and that's interesting because it suggests to me that the grain has been well matured for whatever age it has been used and it wouldn't surprise me if the grain that's gone into this whiskey has actually spent some time maturing in ex single malt casks just a hunch um, I chose this as my whiskey for the year 2024 because of the lack of advertising, the minimalist packaging, so you're not wasting a penny, a single penny or dime or euro on fancy boxes that just get put in the bin anyway. I really appreciate that. Frankly, I think it's environmentally sensitive. Uh, you might be interested to know that the label used, the three little labels that go in the bottle, um, they have some barley in them to give them a little bit of texture. You hardly, barely notice it, but it is another little quiet little um, original thought that's gone into this particular brand. And also it's the timing you see, because at this moment in time when some brands out there are bigging up their uniqueness and rarity along with every other single brand out there and trying to distract us away from intrinsic quality, smell and taste, Ardna Merkin are doing the opposite. They're saying our malt's so good we're going to bring out a traditional blend here and furthermore we're going to bring the price down. You can buy this in Scotland for £28.50. After this review, you'll be probably seeing it for about £30. You might find it as high as £34, but you don't pay any more than that. It's a real budget delivered, intrinsic quality whiskey experience, which is minimal marketing, virtually zero hype and therefore by that very provenance it makes it more interesting, more respectful of the customer. I really don't, you know, when I bought this bottle and I'm, I'm reviewing it, I don't feel that I'm being set up and patronised by the producers and that's important. There's some brands out there that I'm really, I'm not even reviewing them anymore because I find the over-branding, the over-marketing of them so patronising and condescending that really they've got to take a reality check. These are the same sort of distilleries that try and market their whisky as non-fungible tokens. Do you remember them, malt mates? Do you remember them? What a shit show that was. How condescending. Now, let's add some water to this. Before I go any further, I hope you like the new look, by the way. I've started off minimalist, um, but I will be adding a few features as the weeks go on. I'm adding, by the way, because it's 46%, a full teaspoon, that's five millilitres of water to this blend. And after a few minutes, because it's relatively young whiskey, particularly the single malts, but the thing is, it's really well made. So that compensates for the youthfulness and it actually amplifies the experience because it's very much spirit driven. And I'm talking good quality spirit. I'm talking quality that if you were to put these spirit profiles as new make towards a master blender, particularly in the old school, they would categorize the, the distilleries involved in providing the malt for this as top 10% in, in the blending blending hierarchy. Um, it's wonderfully refreshing as a concept. 
I anticipate other distilleries are going to do something similar. And if they want to succeed like Ardna Merkin, all they have to do is manage the quality carefully and accept that it's, we're coming into a moment in time in global whisky economics where distilleries are going to have to accept lower margins because people do not have the money to overspend on whiskies, particularly when they see them appearing at auction after they've bought them from a retailer going for a cheaper price. I can assure you that's the sort of message that very quickly gains traction and attention online. And online is now the definitive platform that is promoting and sharing the experience of not just Scotch whisky, but other quality spirits from around the world. It's just, it's the new reality. It's the post pandemic lockdown reality of it. Online is the most influential platforms way ahead of traditional media, way ahead of magazines, way ahead of books now, which is really they're dated as soon as they're published, depending of course on the information that they're carrying. So it's something to be mindful of. I've added a drop of water to this, I've given it a couple of minutes, Let get, let's get back and give it a wee nose and see how we're getting on. Softened, oily, it's coming oily, very soft, um, slightly resinous citrus notes, pineapple, grapefruit and a little touch of lemon. There's a hint of gingeriness in there in the nose. The very soft, discreet vanillas. But what's most prominent is that it feels like a real old-fashioned steam engine style of whiskey. My goodness, how I miss those kinds of whiskies I used to get from independent bottlers back in the 1990s. And here it is, the timing to recreate old style um, sensation complex whiskies is back with us again. Distillers, please take note. This is people's, people's personal palates are developing and maturing faster than as ever been witnessed historically and therefore the demand for quality complex whiskey experiences is matching it. It's where the magic is. It's where the malt moments are. It's one reason why I'm reviewing this whiskey for you. Cheers. I hope you have a great new year. Taste. Wonderfully savoury. There's definitely some prominent cold, smoky West Coast Ardnamurkin whiskey in, in there. I recognise it immediately. Um, it is immaculately blended together. The marrying process is, is superb. It, it comes across as one, I really the experience, particularly if you've maybe got a few years of drinking whiskey under your, under your belt, the whiskey come the, the experience comes across as a, just a delightful rounded complex young old school single malt. You won't even notice the grain influence in it. I mean, I've been looking for corn notes. You know that custody brulee notes. I'm just not getting it. The the grain column still whiskey is very much in the background and it's very much playing a discreet role as the two single malts. I believe it's two single malts. It could be three, possibly four, but I'm noticing two single malts really meshing beautifully together. It's not a long experience in the palate, but it's a, apart from a very interesting and wonderfully elemental arrival, which is slightly marine and just a little bit sort of outdoorsy, you have a rapid development, really good quality, sherry distinctive, you get the raisiny richness, little bit of soft spices there, little bit of cardamom and um, soft cinnamon. Um, and then into the finish, the finish isn't particularly long because these are young whiskies, but it's substantial. And I tell you what, it's just great value 
for money and that is primarily why I chose it. For a political reason, I, there was plenty of single malts to choose from as my whisky for the year. But I chose this. And there's a reason for that. And I will come to it in my next review. In the meantime, let's give this a malt mark. No, let's give this. <laughs> it's not a malt mark. For, it tastes like a malt, but um, it's not a malt mark. It's blended, right? It's blended. Yee! Yeah. Oh dear. Bear with me. Sometimes I struggle. It's just all the excitement of it all. 85 out of 100. What a good. N not an over the top mark, because it's a young whiskey. But see the concept. See the lack of filler, flannel, advertising, and condescending hype. There's none of that. And frankly, I find that very refreshing. Very refreshing. As refreshing as this whiskey. Thank you for watching. Pop back again. Back into the bothy. I will be here. Presenting Ralphie Review 1009 Extras. See you soon.